So now we're going to start exploring different phyla of fungi. And there's quite a few of them, but the ones that I'm going to focus on are the ones that you likely have seen before, or at least know a little bit about. We'll first start about general fungi classification, and then we're going to dive into our first phyla, Phylum zygomycota. So just in general, when we're classifying fungi, you've probably heard the word yeast before. Now yeast that you might use in baking or might use um, for beer or wine fermentation, that is a particular species of fungi. But the word yeast in general in the scientific sense just means a fungi that is single cellular. There's a lot of fungi that are multicellular, right? You buy mushrooms, that's multicellular fungi. But there are some single cellular ones, all referred to as yeast. The different phyla of fungi are pretty much classified by the way they reproduce, particularly the way they sexually reproduce. Pretty much, I don't want to say all, a lot of fungi can reproduce both asexually and sexually. Now, the next few life cycles that we're going to talk about are just the sexual life cycle. But just know in the back of your mind that a lot of these fungi can also reproduce asexually. Now, in this diagram, you see five different organisms or five different phyla of fungi, and then it shows animalia as the outgroup, but showing that we do have a common ancestor with fungi. Now, we're only going to cover three of these. Um, some of these, the glomeromycota, is actually pretty new, uh, and that's why we don't really cover it too much because we're still learning more about it. Fungi are kind of in a, a state of a lot of reclassification as we get stronger molecular tools to kind of determine these relationships. So our first phyla that we're going to talk about is phylum zygomycota. Before I, I go any further, take a look at just the word zygomycota. So the first part of the three phyla we're going to talk about, the first part is going to be related to the sexual reproductive life cycle. So this zygote is refer, or sorry, zygo is referring to zygospore, and that'll make more sense soon. The myc, this is a prefix referring to fungi. So we see myc a lot, not only in the phylum names, but we saw mycelium, right, the, the hyphae that's underground. We saw mycorrhizae. This is the fungi associated with plant roots. So myc is used in fungi. So if you're ever looking at a test or a brand new word that you've never seen before, if you see myc, you know it's fungi related. So organisms found in phylozygomycota, this is a lot of our molds. They're referred to as the zygospore fungi because their reproductive unit or a part of their reproductive cycle is the zygospore. And we'll talk more about that soon. One example, this is the example we're going to use when talking about the life cycle is black bread mold, but a lot of our molds are found in phylum zygomycota. On the right hand side, you've probably seen moldy bread like this. Uh, if your kitchen's anything like my kitchen, <laughs> this has happened to you quite a few times. The photo on the left is just zoomed in a lot more using a microscope. And so this is what it looks like. Uh, I won't even say the molecular level. So this is something you could see not um, using like a dissecting scope. But this is what they look up look like close up. These black heads, we'll talk about what that is soon, that's what's giving this greenish black appearance on your bread mold. All these white strands that you see, these are hyphae, and there's even more hyphae in that bread. So pretty much for all of these phyla, we're going to talk a little bit about what's included in the phyla, and then we'll talk about its life cycle. Now, I have found different images of life cycles through Google and through textbooks. I'm going to tell you right now, the life cycles you find online just have a lot more detail than what, what I care for. Um, so I'm going to give you this life cycle just so that you have a nice picture. But you'll notice on the slide I have keywords. And for this particular life cycle, the keywords that you should know are sporangium, spores, zygospore and meiosis. You'll notice there's other things, gametangia, nuclear fusion, cytoplasmic fusion. Ignore all those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch screens here in a second and I'm going to draw the life cycle and simplify it just using those key words 
in the life cycle. So I encourage you to, in your notes, to draw something similar to what I'm drawing. It's not inaccurate, it's just a little bit more simplified than the image you're seeing on this screen. So let me go ahead and change my screen real quick so that um, we can kind of draw this together. I am not an artist, just to, just to warn you uh, about that. All right, so let me just make sure I got everything I need. Okay, so here's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with our bread. This is our beautiful slice of bread. And in our bread, we're gonna have strands in it. And I'll, I'll label these strands here in a second. So these are strands. And what these strands are, these are the hyphae. We're going to talk about how those hyphae got there. So this is a cycle. So cycle, think of it as circular, it comes back. So we'll talk about how they got there. Related to that, because it's a cycle, if you are drawing this or whatever, the steps don't matter, right? It doesn't matter what you start with because they all loop around. Now, if you recall, when learning about the fungi morphology, that hyphae that are inside the substrate or underground or in the tree, these are going to be haploid. So we have our haploid hyphae just growing in this bread. And here's, here's where things get interesting. So hyphae can be either positive or negative type. You can kind of think of this as male and female. It's just fungi don't really have those designations because there's not egg and there's not sperm, but we do still have this idea of opposites. So there's a positive mating type and a negative mating type. And these grow and these grow and they get closer and closer and then they touch. And when they touch, what starts happening is they form together into a structure called the zygospore. This is where the name zygospore fungi comes from. This is where the name zygomycota comes from. So again, this haploid positive hyphae and this, this um, haploid negative hyphae are starting to grow together, grow together, grow together. And when they get close enough together, they start creating this zygospore. And this zygospore is going to essentially bring both of these different types of DNA together. You could almost think of it as an egg and a sperm coming together and creating a zygote. But we're not talking about animals, we're talking about fungi. So this zygospore, because it is the, the linking or the, the fusion of two haploid structures, is going to create a diploid structure. Now this zygospore is, is still in our bread. This is still incredibly small. You wouldn't look at your piece of bread and be like, ah, oh, the zygospore is there. Like this is, this is incredibly small microscopic type scale. But this is all on the bread. I mean, you see the bread mold, and in that previous picture, you saw something like literally growing out. So that would be our next step. So what's gonna start happening is you get a hyphae that's growing up. In that previous picture, it looked like a strand, these white strands. So this hyphae starts growing up, and at the end of it, it kind of creates this other bulb-like structure. So the zygospore is the bulb-like structure where the two hyphae meet. Then this hyphae starts growing into this secondary bulb. And this secondary bulb is called a sporangium. Now this sporangium is, is, is the same structure. Like all this was, was the zygospore just growing. So, so nothing crazy is happening, which is why it's still diploid. Like, nothing weird happened. You can almost think of it as like the zygospore, um, sorry for the pop-up, the zygospore is like your fist and then like your finger starts growing. Like it, your finger did nothing weird to become haploid. Like zygospore just grows. It's just growing. It's undergoing mitosis to grow. So the sporangium also going to be uh, a diploid uh, structure. Now think of the word sporangium. So what do you think is going to be developing inside of a sporangium? And if you're like, ah, oh, I think spores are growing in the sporangium, you would be totally correct. So inside of the sporangium, I'm going to use a different color um, just to kind of represent it a little bit better. So inside of this sporangium, 
I have all of these red spores. And I mean, we're talking about like thousands upon thousands, maybe, I don't know, might not be large enough for millions, but tons and tons of spores are inside of the sporangium. Now, spores are created through the process of meiosis. So what I'm going to do is next to sporangium, I'm just going to write undergoes meiosis. And then I'm going to draw an arrow to these spores. So undergoes meiosis to create these spores. Now you got to think back. You got to think back to meiosis days. So, so really bring it back. If an organism is undergoing meiosis, or really if a cell is undergoing meiosis, what does it end up with? Does it end up with haploid cells or does it end up with diploid cells? So I'm going to let you consider it for just a hot second. So again, when a diploid cell undergoes meiosis, what does it create? Haploid or diploid cells? Hopefully, God, I feel like I'm Dora the Explorer. At home, what does it create? So it creates haploid cells. So the result of meiosis is half of the number of chromosomes. So if it's diploid organism, half of that would just be a haploid organism. So again, in the sporangium, the sporangium, the cells inside the sporangium are undergoing meiosis, which is going to create these haploid spores. Now, depending on the conditions, for some fungi, it's because there's a lot of moisture. For other fungi, it's because it's really dry. For some, it could be because there's a lot of sunlight. For others, it could be a lot of shade. Once conditions are right, and what right means is really species specific, this sporangium is going to burst open. And when that sporangium bursts open, all these spores are going to get released. And so that's what I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw spores all over the place. So all these spores all over the place. I'm going to draw two here. I'm just going to change colors real quick. There we go. Now, if this is bread mold and this is your bag of bread, some of those spores might land on another slice of bread, the neighboring slice of bread. And so I've drawn two spores on this slice of bread. And the last step, this isn't the or Sometimes when students describe this, they're like, oh, and then the spores get released into the environment. Cool. But our scenario started with hyphae and bread, and we haven't closed that loop yet. So our very last thing is these haploid spores. I'm just going to draw spores again. It's the same thing that you saw before. So these haploid spores, if the spores are in a good enough environment, so enough moisture, enough nutrition, etc., kind of like seeds. They're not seeds, but you can kind of think seeds don't germinate unless they are in the conditions that they need. Then what will happen is these spores start growing into hyphae. So these are hyphae. And remember, hyphae that are growing in a substrate are haploid. So these spores are just simply growing. So the spores are haploid, meaning the hyphae are haploid, because they're just growing. They're, they're not coming together to fuse to make diploid. Nothing of that's happening. It's just that spore undergoes mitosis and just keeps duplicating those cells over and over again. So the last step would be spores in good conditions are going to start growing into hyphae. And now our cycle can repeat itself. Now those hyphae, if they're opposite mating types, can touch and they grow into the zygospore, etc. Now in my image, all I've done was just labeled the major parts. But what you should be doing in your notes is actually explaining what happened. Now this picture helps, but what I would recommend, you can pause this video here soon, I recommend in your picture labeling them. So you might be step one and, you know, step two. Here's step three. And the numbering you do doesn't matter. Um, I was just trying to match what I was doing it in the order, but the, the numbering doesn't matter. But what I would do in your notes is in addition to the diagram, do a step-by-step -step guide. Step one, this happens. Step two, this happens. And if you need to rewatch this, go for it. So I'm going to get my screen kind of set back up. This is it for the drawing of the life cycle. While I'm getting my screen set back up, you might end up just pausing this video to kind of fill in those notes of what was actually happening in that life cycle.
Okay, so again, here's the book version of the life cycle. We did everything that the book shows. It's just, I got, I wouldn't say I got rid of steps, like we talked about all the steps, but I got rid of some of the in-between words, like what is the actual process called? So again, this image isn't bad, but really just focus on those key words that I have listed here, and it's also what I drew on the life cycle. Finally, I just wanted to show you this image. These are two microscopy images of two different structures. So in that life cycle, we talked about the zygospore, and we talked about the sporangium. And in my diagram, <laughs> it was just like circles, right? Like they looked identical. But if you looked at them under a microscope, they actually are different. And, and you can actually tell when just looking at one of them, which one it is. So here I have two pictures, again, one of zygospore, one of sporangium or sporangia, the, the multiple. So my question to you is, which is which? So I'm gonna give you a second, just think about it. Which picture is of which? Well, hopefully, the one you identified as zygospore is the one on the left. And the way that we can tell that is you see there's two hyphae coming up. So there's two hyphae, and when they touch, they start creating that zygospore in between them. Whereas the sporangium is what we see on the right-hand side. There's only one hyphae, that one strand that comes up, and the sporangium is just at the, the top of it. So while, yes, these two structures kind of look similar, the zygospore has two hyphae coming together, whereas the sporangium is just one hyphae leading up to it. So that's pretty much all we're going to talk about our, our molds in phylum zygomycota. And again, when learning these life cycles, just keep it simple. Um, it, simpler, I like simpler is better. And you get the general idea of these differences between the haploid and the diploid stage.